So are you sure? Whatever the answer which you have been given. Yes, sir. If you see here, oh, I haven't stopped sharing. If you see here, now we have three things, right? One is class, and one is uh, interface. One is abstract class. So in the class, only implemented methods. Interfaces, only unimplemented. unimplemented methods. And an abstract class will have implemented plus unimplemented. Now, if I wanted to create an object, where the objects would be created? In the heap memory, the object will be created. If you wanted to create the objects in the heap memory, who is means who is going to give that means who is allocating the space and who is giving the space I required? Who is going to allocate? New, constructor. New, constructor. 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 New keyword will allocate the memory. Constructor will say how New much keyword space. will allocate the memory. Constructor will say that how much space I require. Yeah. So as this all methods. All methods are implemented. I know that how much memory it is required. Uh, just give me one second. Sorry. So I know that how much memory it is required. I can give this one. Now that's the reason the constructor will help and then constructors will can do. But in terms of this particular interfaces, can I know how much space it required for it? No, no, no. That's the reason we will not have the constructor and nothing to be stored for this. Now for the abstract classes, I'll be having implemented but unimplemented. Both things will be there. Now, if I don't have this particular constructor, but I should know that at least for the implemented methods, I should know what the space it required, right? Yes, sir. This will have the yes. partial information, not full information. So what you mean to know is we will be having the constructors. Answer is yes, we will have the constructors for the abstract classes. No for interfaces, yes for classes. Why will not have the constructor for interface? Because, because, there of be unimplemented. because there is no implemented methods. All abstract methods are there, so that's the reason we will not have it. So why can't we create an object? Because there is no constructor. Now, here I have a constructor, right? Can I create an object? No, sir. Because it's partial. No. This is partial because it, it have only the partial info. It don't have the full info, right? Now this may go for wrong. It will go for the toss. That is the reason we can't create an object for this. Now how I need to create the object for this one? You can take any particular uh, uh, parent class. Sorry, child class. We can take that one and then you can create it. See, for example, now I created an abstract. OK, apps class. A. OK, I'll put this one as vehicle right now when i have an abstract class has vehicle abstract class as vehicle now you've seen this one right so this abstract class is vehicle now with this particular class i'm extending right this apps class vehicle extends xuv okay now this particular class, whatever the now when I have been inherited this one, now what it will be trying to do. So in the XUV, I can I mean whatever the unimplemented methods are there, I should implement that inherited unimplemented methods plus its own methods plus inherited methods. These all three things would be there. So this constructor has the capacity to allocate for all. So that is where you are able to access all the methods, right? 
So that is reason. So now if you wanted to create a memory for this one, now we can create that particular thing. For an example, now what we can try to do for this one is, see, for, uh, I have been, sorry, I have been wrongly uh, given this one. So now this is an abstract class vehicle. Now I have a class called XUV. Extends, extends yes, uh, vehicle. So now here I have this complete combination. Now what I wanted to do is I can do create this one vehicle OBJ equal to new XUV. So now the child class memory I'm trying to give it to the parent class. What is this called as? Upcast. This is one of the very important interview questions. Upcast. This is called upcasting. The casting means changing one form to another form. So we have been seeing the type casting means where the data types will be changing from one type to another type. So here what we are trying to do is casting the child class memory to the parent class memory. So this is called type means upcasting. So that what we try to do is upcasting this particular child class memory to the parent class. So parent abstract class. So this is also called. So do you remember last time we have been discussed when it comes to the upcasting? Uh, hey, there are multiple things uh, we'll be doing in the upcasting. One, allocating memory to or memory from class to an interface. interface. This is first scenario. This is an abstraction. Second thing, same in the abstraction, you have some, another thing is allocating from child class, child class to the parent abstract class. So this is also an upcasting. Now, third one, child class to the parent class. This is in simple in inheritance. Head. So these both things falls into the abstraction. This falls into the inheritance. Child class to the parent class. So when someone asks you, what do you mean by upcasting? See, always the people will give you the definition. What do you mean by upcasting? Is giving a child class memory to a parent class is called an upcasting. They give the definition of this. But you need to explain them in terms of inheritance. Giving the child class memory to the parent class memory, it is called upcasting. But when it comes to the abstraction, giving the class memory to the an interface, and when it comes to the, uh, this is into the interface interfaces, and when it comes to the uh, abstract classes, giving the child class memory to the parent class abstraction, in the abstraction class, this is called in upcasting. So the upcasting can be uh, defined in three different layers or three different topics. According to this, it will be happening. So exactly memory means while we creating an object, so we will be having the constructor. So that particular constructor will have the memory. So allocating that particular child class memory to the parent class object uh, for object reference. And then with that particular object reference, you'll be calling around all the methods and variables. So these are the things called as upcasting. So this is how upcasting will be defined. And this is how, see, always don't remember that. The people will be asking, what is upcasting? So this is a regular interviewer. If asking some questions like this, he's a regular interviewer. But if a child, an interviewer asks you the definition of this, and then what is that? For an example, the people will be asking you, hey, if I'm able to give a, a class memory to an interface object reference, then what is this called as? Upcasting only. Upcasting in inter, uh, interfaces. So this is a typical behavior of an interviewer. So this guy is not so easy. So now that is how we need to evaluate. So the simplest way of asking question is what is upcasting? But they will not ask you the question. They will give you the answer and they will ask you the question. So that's a typical behavior of an interviewer. So what you need to see now, what you are training now is, you're not trying to learn the concept. You are trying to understand the person who you're going to talk. So how you can conquer them? So how to understand your interior and how to crack that interior? So that is what you are, I'm trying to give you here. See, mostly you will all be knowing the concept. See, even if you go and listen to the videos, there are much more better than me 
who have explained these particular topics very well. But which topics which you will not get it is how to handle this particular questions in the interview is what the most important thing which we can add it in the sessions. Okay, fine. I'll stop here because uh, once again, I, I'll be diverted from this one. I don't want to waste the time here. Now, tell me any other questions. So did did your question clarified, Girija? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? But these are very, very important segregations. Take the screenshot off, written somewhere else, and prepare the notes and then uh, share it to us. So, whatever the things which I have been talked about, the abstractions, interfaces, classes. So, create that particular packages and keep that. So, this should be having a reference for your future teams. What the uh, I should means I'll be selecting one or two from your uh, complete uh, team uh, who have been implemented via packages with all these particular respective topics. So I used to follow one particular notes. So uh, her name is Darani. So she she used to maintain very clean and then another uh, girl Priya. So they used to maintain. So even for my reference, I used to use those particular references, but I lost them all. I wanted to once again get these particular packages and the references of the implementations, write these all particular notes and the things so that it might be helpful for your future generations who would be trying to do this so they can see on that one. OK. Fine. So this is about a class interface and abstract classes, and then uh, you will be having uh, uh, these implementation. And then one more thing. So there would be some other terminology called concrete. Uh, concrete classes. See. Um, what do you mean by a concrete class? See, now this is just for your uh, just for your reference only. So the people you, you will use to confuse you with this particular concrete classes uh, versus this one. Which implements the abstract models and super abstract classes, which extends to. So now, what is meant by this particular concrete classes? It means the people will be uh, asking you the differences between a, uh, an abstract class and a concrete class. So concrete class is nothing but it is a type of subclass which all the implemented sub means abstract methods from the super class. This is called uh, which is extended. OK, so this is called a concrete class. I know that you didn't understand this point. Uh, let me explain you this so that it would be easy for you to understand. Uh, I'm I think anyways, I'm erasing this one. So hope you have been noted down all those particular pointers. Now. We know what is class. So we know what is class now. We know what is interface. And we know what is abstract. Now what is this particular concrete? So now this is only for the interview purpose I'm explaining about it. So now they will be asking, hey, can you define me the differences between a class and interface and abstract class? We can say that, hey, class is nothing but all the methods are implemented. So that's the reason it's a class and class will have all the combinations of this. It's a blueprint, blah, 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 blah. And interface, interface will not have all unimplemented methods. An abstract class will be having with the abstract means implemented and unimplemented methods. Now, what is concrete in class? Or what is the difference between a class and the concrete class? So this is a prominently asked interview question. So now what is class? And the, uh, this one is. So actually, uh, uh, actually, you understand that what is this particular class means? Class means it will have all the implemented methods. Concrete class is also have the complete implemented methods. But where we will be using this particular concrete class means? Example, now I have been created an abstract class. OK, uh, bank. Now, in this particular abstract class, I'm having the unimplemented methods like withdrawal. OK, Tra means uh, uh, transfer. So these are the methods I have all uh, unimplemented methods and implemented methods also I'll be having it. So implemented methods like um, other methods I have. Now I'm extending this one. So now I'll be extending this one into class HDFC. OK, extends. Bank. Blur braces, right? In this blur braces, now, as soon as I have been extended this one, so these two methods have to be implemented. So it will be throwing me error message. Now, what I'll try to do, 
I'll take the withdraw and then I'll implement this one. Then I'll take the transfer. I'll implement this one. And then it have this particular HDFC has its own. So I'd say that HDFC uh, uh, FD. I implemented this one. So now here, as this is the class, this implements everything, right? This implements this, this implements this, and the complete methods in the class, it is implemented. But what it is implementing is, this is inheriting this particular abstract class methods, right? Abstract class methods implementation was happening in this particular class. So this is called as concrete class. So now if you have done the any implementation for the abstract class methods, then this particular class is called as an concrete class. Very simple, right? So you know, the definition of the class, this class and this class, both are same. Every method in a class, it should be implemented. But what is the difference in the concrete classes? It, it need to implement all the unimplemented methods from the abstract class. So that implementation, if I am doing it here, then this class is called as concrete class. So that is the basic differences between a class interface, abstract class, and the concrete class. And this is really very rare that people can explain me because in many of my interviews, I have been asked. I didn't get any answer. 99 percentage. I didn't get the answers for these differences. See, that's the reason I, I stopped taking the interviews also. I know that anyways, see now the last from till today to last okay, six years to eight years, whoever I met out of 100, one or two members only really having the complete knowledge on the Java. And just for the namesake, only for the namesake, they do the course. They go to Amir Pet or they will take the online courses now. And then immediately they will complain. They will complete within the span of 30 days. We will ask them fast track. Hey, complete this one within uh, uh, one week. What it will be for them? You pay. They will complete in one day also. See, the point is, it's not the intention of completing the course. The point is what you understand. It takes some time. It, it See, the room can't build in a single day. That you need to understand. So the fast forward things, you can't do it. So you can see if it is a three months course, you can make it for at least two months or maximum within 50 days, but not less than that. If you're going in such a pattern, you will not understand. Just for namesakes, you will complete the courses. How much knowledge you need to get it? Only by implementations only. Why I'm asking every day, you implement, you implement, you implement. You will not understand now. When you go for the live, when you now you are in a simulator mode now, when you are in the live mode, then you'll understand this. Okay, once again, I'll be diverting. Come back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, any other questions? The concrete classes, abstract classes, interfaces, abstractions. Any more questions on this? No, sir. Okay, fine. Then uh, one last topic which we I need to cover from this one, which is uh, encapsulation. Okay, this is. One of the most important thing, okay, encapsulation. So one of the very important topic uh, uh, here in this particular uh, oops concept, but uh, I do I'll say that luckily we will not use this one in our testing implementations. See if it is from the development point of view, definitely that we need to know. And if someone is going to do the framework implementations. They are also very rarely they will use it. So you now for the framework implementation, the most frequently used concepts are uh, uh, this polymorphism and inheritance and object creations, interfaces. See, if someone is using these particular concepts, means actually there are a lot of frameworks will be there. What is a framework? Anyways, I'll talk about that one when we're going for the framework. There would be uh, a commandable framework and uh, which is uh, uh, command and control mode. And um, next one is collaborative uh, uh, 
collaborative uh, frameworks, commandable and collaborative. And this is dependent and this is independent. Means when we go for the framework architectures that you will understand because see, architecting a framework, it is not a simple. So there are a lot of things, but nowadays what the people will do is they will go to the um, some GitHubs and then they'll copy the framework and they'll bring it back. But creating a framework is an art. Copying and getting it that really doesn't make any difference for it. Now, based upon the framework, framework style, you can know about your management or your architect. Because I've been for more than 10 years, worked only as an architect, I mean the QA architect. I designed multiple frameworks on this mode and I have been designed multiple frameworks on this mode. Now, when we are designing this particular framework, we should understand what is the intention that would be there means um i don't know uh, i may misspell some words but that is what the fact uh, uh, when when some framework is in this particular mode command and control mode how we need to identify that one within a minute we can identify that whether this is a command control uh, framework or a collaborative framework uh, probably it takes certain time for you people to first of all because you need to know what is a framework then you can start analyzing these all but why i'm saying this particular example now because so these all frameworks are co constructed based upon this encapsulation interfaces polymorphism and these structures with these structures only this particular framework would be created they make this particular st structures as so complicated and yesterday we have been talked about the abstraction what is the definition of an abstraction Definition of an abstraction. Showing the essential information to the user. See, now there is a vice versa. Hiding the data Hiding. from the user and then showing whatever he required. The same way the complete framework will be in the abstraction mode. They will hide the complete data and the framework and the code and everything. Just they will give you whatever you required for it. So that is what this complete command and control mode. So to implement this one by name, it's you see it definitely will be using the abstraction. You would be using the interfaces. You would be using the polymorphism and then inheritance. These are common. But if someone is using this particular abstraction interface, means uh, uh, the interfaces and the encapsulation, so they don't want it to share something for you. They are hiding something from you. So that is what collaborative frameworks. Sorry, command and control frameworks, and some frameworks. It is simple, easy to use, and easy to implement. So those frameworks are created on the inter means uh, inheritance and polymorphisms. So probably now whatever the things which you guys are seeing now in the Q means uh, uh, team, so who are there from the QB, they'll be seeing all these things in this mode. Here the people want slaves. I know that I shouldn't use this one, but this is a fact. Here the team wants the collaboration means when you go for the collaborative mode. So here everyone is able to do the changes. Everyone can make the changes. Any, anything can be done in these frameworks, but here they don't want them. They don't want her to touch their frameworks. They don't want her to make any small modifications in their frameworks. So that's the reason they will keep this one as an abstractions. And just what they wanted to do is they'll give some dumb work, write the test cases, convert, Means for an example, they'll convert one test case and they'll ask you to convert 1000 test cases. They do the daily job. This is how majority of the companies will work. Any big MNCs, they do the same. They will not allow you to enter into their frameworks and then do these particular changes. You will not understand now, but when you go into the trainings down the line two, three years after this, one day you will remember these words. Because for the last 18 years, I have been worked on multiple frameworks and created multiple frameworks. Many a times management will insist us, hey, don't give any information to the, uh, the employees or the explanation on the framework also, do, they will not allow us to do it. What they will do is they will make uh, the team uh, just to do what the work they need to do, that information, remaining things they will not do. And many companies has been thrown me out because of this reason too, when I'm sharing the knowledge across the team. They don't want it to share the knowledge. 
because if they know even the the team is also like that so they will learn they will go out they don't see now it, nowadays it, it is a very rare to hear the word called loyalties so that's where uh, the management is also very cleverly does that because what the people will do is they learn as much as possible and then they will ditch and then they will go however it doesn't really matter uh, uh, here but how the situation from the both sides it is in the same way it's not only from the management why the management will think so in the mint these are the situ situations and the scenarios because previously i don't understand that their shoes only from the employees point of view only i used to understand now then uh, now i'm able to understand from the employer point of view pain and then employees point of the pain also but only what it made me to dominate is as i'm a, for 16 17 years as an employee this dominates me on this okay fine once again i'm deviating so here what my point uh, point uh, 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 over here is so these are the frameworks which should be created so now while creating these particular frameworks we'd be using these particular topics of uh, encapsulation and then inheritance for encapsulation and abstractions for the command and control mode and this is the form of the leadership say how to run a particular organization it depends upon that particular leaders right the leader will choose two things either he can go with the command and control or he can go with the collaboration with the lead by example so now what is this by lead by example means a right uh, example you've seen the kgf movie right that is a lead by example means every scene why it is highlighted means it is a lead by example means everything he will take first he starts and make the people to do it any particular thing so that is where the team can be collaborated and they have the trust and confidence on that particular person so uh, usually usually the people in the industry 90 percentage will be here even before five to uh, eight years i'm i'm strongly on this particular command and control then later i changed it became a big transition for me to change from here to here but i see the output and i still remember what means what the things that happen in this situation when i'm leading the team and now i'm in this how it would be so always you need to remember that so this lead by example is a most important factor and always when you got the problems so always the leaders will face the problems they will not escape from the problems if you are escaping you are not a leader shielding your team when the problem comes you need to shield you need to stand in front of them and then take care of the things whatever the if there is a success give that particular success to them decision making problem facing anything so that makes you very stronger and that makes you to give the trust hey that guy is there the hope the the ray of hope you'll behave right so that is how a leader should behave and this someone will not come and gives you always the power should be grabbed always the responsibility should be grabbed that is how you need to prepare yourself see organizations will look for this particular people and all these particular people you don't need to ask any for anything so by default they will grow in the ladder very quickly at the same point of time they will struggle also and i'm telling you right if you struggle like this for 1 to 2 years then you can't even imagine your career how it will go or how it will boost sure so this will this is how this has to be done okay i think uh, today i'm diverting multiple times from the topic so anyways uh, i need to talk about this uh, uh, encapsulation but why i'm talking about this i'm talking about is so when we improve means implement this abstraction and the encapsulation so that is the reason i just wanted to talk about this command and control and then collaboration approaches so there i was consistently getting deviated so if any particular frameworks has been implemented only at a framework level only we can have the implementation so remaining times and remaining things it will be not having this okay so that is the reason we will not fully concentrate on the abstraction and the encapsulation but at least you should know for the interview level what is this abstraction and what is this particular encapsulation okay before me going for this particular encapsulation topic so any other questions as part of uh, this abstraction and the interfaces
Nice. Okay, <clears throat> fine. Let me take you through the um, this particular encapsulation. First of all, we need to understand what is encapsulation. So the encapsulation is to make sure that the sensitive data is hidden from the users. See the name itself, it was saying that hidden. So how we can hidden this? There are two ways. We will be having declared the variables in a private. And uh, we will be having the getter setter method to access the these particular variables. It is really a bit difficult to understand this particular encapsulation with this particular definitions. You know what? Now, whatever the efforts we kept it for these particular interfaces and all, you need to keep 3x to 4x to understand the encapsulation. See, you might be feeling that, hey, you just to see the definitions of the both. Abstraction and uh, encapsulation. What they're trying to do? Both are trying to hide. Hide the data. Hide, hide the, the data. data. Both are doing the same. Hiding the data. In terms of this one, what it is trying to do, the, the abstraction, it will present what the data it required for the end user. But in the encapsulation, they will provide certain mechanism to access this particular uh, data. They will hide the data and provide the mechanism to access them. What is that particular mechanism is? This is called the getters and setters. And everything they will define this one in the private mode. You means what do you mean by private and then public? You would be having the private, for example, you have a private park. Anyone can go for a public park. Anyone can go, any can anyone can access, but there is a private park. Will you allow to go into your private parks? For an example, there is a home. In front of the home, there is a big garden park. For example, can you go and access that particular uh, park? No, that's a private property, private park. Public park. In the public, anyone can go, anyone can use that particular park. So that's the basic difference between a private and public, right? So the same way in Java also, we do have the access permissions, which is called access specifiers. We have private, public protected default. So these are the permission levels you would be having it. Anyways, when I talk about the access specifiers, we will talk about this one in detail. But as of now, the topic is on this particular encapsulation. So that I, that's the reason I'll restrict myself to here. Now, what they will try to do is they will define you the private members, private methods, private variables. So these particular methods and variables can be accessed via this particular get method and set method. Hey, how I need to implement these getters and setters. So now that particular implementations are really a different. So I don't want to get into this particular encapsulation implementation as of now, because definitely it will uh, uh, confuse you. But this is purely to control. So, you know, I told you right. So this is this controls the class attributes and the members. Methods. It completely controls the class. Whatever the thing it need to be given, so they need to specifically ask the permission and then they need to take that and then they need to use it. Now, what usually the encapsulation is. Now, what the general explanation they will be trying to give it to you is. So the basic definition, you can see it in this one. So what they will try to do is see encapsulate. So now if you see here, now they are encapsulating, means if you see it, so now this is the medicine inside this particular capsule. 
So what they will be doing is they'll be creating a wrapper around this particular methods and variables. So this is called encapsulation. So encapsulation definition talks about wrapping up of the data from a class is called encapsulation. What is this wrapping? What is wrapping? You are getting some chocolates. I don't know how many people knows mango bites. Mango bite is a chocolate melody. Or these are, I think it's um, a, a 90s kids knows about these chocolates. Uh, so this particular mango bites or melodies, you'd be having, you'll be having the toffee, right? Around that particular toffee, you'll have this particular wrapper. You remove the wrapper and then you leave the chocolate. Okay, even now you can have the dairy milk, right? But some dairy milks now you don't have the wrapper, that gold color foil around that particular uh, chocolate. Nowadays, if you directly open, you are able to get the chocolate. But previously was you used to have it is, when you open that one, a gold foil would be there around that one. And once you remove that gold foil, inside that one, the chocolate is there. So you're like wrapping that particular uh, chocolate. Or else the best example is you're giving a birthday gift. What you do, you'll keep a paper around that color paper or something, gift, gift packing. You'll be doing it, right? A gift packing and then you're giving it. Means the original is there. On top of that one, you will be wrapping that. Why? Why you're wrapping that paper? To hide the gift. To hide the gift. That's a, one of the important factor. To hide the gift, what you're giving to them, you are not telling them, but inside there is a gift. Second thing, safety. See, while you're eating the chocolates, you shouldn't have the dust and anything, right? So that's where the data hiding and the safety. These are the both important factors which it made for the encapsulation. So here, what we are trying to do is wrapping up the data. So now that's the reason most of the people, what they have been taken, the example is the capsule. In the capsule, you'll be having the methods and then variables. What else did consist of a class? Class consists of methods and variables. Both all things you'll be keeping into a single wrapper and then giving this particular wrapper to the people. And whatever they required, they'll be using this one. So this is called encapsulation. Encapsulation would be implemented via private. private. And you'll be using the getters and setters method. What is this get and what is this set method? So those are into the little details which you need to go for this. So now you're wanted to set some methods for the getter and then see now you can see it right. Getter, setter and uh, using of this. I really not, uh, I don't wanted you people to get confused on this one. So I'll not talk about the implementation, but I restrict myself to here. Uh, what is the meaning of encapsulation and how you need to define that particular definition? and uh, uh, where the situations will be using on this one. So that is what, or what is the advantage of using this particular encapsulation, I explained you. So now encapsulation is nothing but hiding the data, but how we are going to hide this particular data is, you'll be creating a, graphic, a wrapper around that particular data and then hide that particular data. So this is called encapsulation. So you can give an example that, hey, you can take a capsule and then the capsule, how we will have the medicine. The same way we'll be having all these particular data and methods, having a wrapper around this one and then you will be using all this. So this is called a encapsulation or else you can take a chocolate example and then you can give it. So wrapping up of the data to hide that particular data from the user, then this is called encapsulation. And encapsulation would be done for to secure this one more for the highest security. And then at the same point of time, so hiding this particular data from exposing towards the, uh, the end user. So this is where this wrapping would be done. So now you understand the implementation of the encapsulation and the abstraction itself, the way it would be hiding the things from the user. That is the reason if a framework created on this particular topics, that absolutely that particular framework is command and control, not a collaborative approach. Means you can't even access that. How you can make the changes? Collaborative means what? You should able to contribute for that and you should able to get that. 
access the complete framework. So if you are able to access each and every file, and if you are able to understand each and every file, then that is called collaborative. And if you are not able to access, means you have certain restriction, means that is not collaborative. That is command and control. That's a controlled framework. Means what the access you have, based upon that access only, you can access that. So that is the controlled environment. This is collaborative environment. So by this, you can understand what the type of frameworks we have and how we will be using that particular frameworks and accessing that particular frameworks. You will be understanding that. Fine. Any more questions now? So can can we use encapsulation when it comes to real time scenario in terms of uh, in the perspective of automation? Oops. See that I need to explain you from the framework. Uh, so that's the reason I can't tell you immediately. So for an example, now you wanted to include this particular uh, uh, encapsulation. So this all things would be means as part of the framework implementation only we will be using it in any of the other ways that in the test automation we will not use the encapsulation. In the selenium or in the playwright. There is no means there is everything should be exposed and everything would be used. So the concept of encapsulation will not even uh, not implemented or at least to my knowledge I never seen this encapsulation implementation in our selenium and playwright. Encapsulation and abstraction both. This can be achieved can we, not from the tool level. Only from framework level it can be achieved. In the real time also we can see from this point, not from this point. So that is the reason I said that these topics may not really require because always we need to use it from this. See for an example. Uh, hey, even now, even though we don't use the, in the tools, we can learn what is a problem. Absolutely there is no problem if you wanted to learn. But what is the problem is you can learn all the things also, right? You can learn, we can learn medicine also. Not only the doctors, we will not get the degree, but we can learn. But why will not learn? When we require, we can go for the doctor. But it is not that everything we need to learn. It is not really required until unless we implement every day. So that's the instance of me. So saying that, hey, for utilization from the QA point of view, in the real time, we will never use this uh, abstraction and then encapsulation. But for the interviews, they will ask you the first questions. But in the framework level, we can implement this. But when the, we'll go to the framework level, means at least five to six years of experience when you have it, then only you can go and implement the frameworks. At that point of time, definitely you can take the help of this encapsulation and abstraction. And that too, if you wanted to do it in a collaborative way, then there is no required for this. But if you wanted to do it in a controlled and controlled fashion, so then you need to do it in this particular modes. So that's the reason I can't give you a real time experience from the tool point of view, so, you know, for example, from the polymorphism, we can give the real time uh, example from the inheritance. We can give the real time example because those are implemented in day to day life. But with these two concepts, I don't have any real time experience from the tool point of view. I can give you the implementation from the framework point of view, but not from this point of view. Here. If you wanted to know the real time implementation, then you should understand the framework. Then only you will understand all this because so here we will be wrapping it up. And then from once you have been wrapped up, you would be calling this particular uh, uh, getter and setter. For example, you have web driver. Now this particular object, you would be kept into a getter and setter and then you'd be calling that particular getter and setters. I think somewhere else I have been used this one in one of the framework for sure doing it. Anyone is having uh, our QAB frameworks with you? Anywhere we use this getters and setters. In one of the framework, I remember that I have been implemented long before. But uh, uh, no, not in a regular way we have been used. SB, SB means you, Gautami, you are asking this one or someone is else SB is? Yes, yes, uh, me only Gautami. OK, so. That is where we will not use it in that particular pattern. Okay. okay Fine. Thank you. Uh, any other questions?
Any other questions around this? I think once again, I'm saying multiple times. So I'll feel, you know, if when you show me something, I'll not feel happy. When you start implementing, then only I'll feel happy. See, multiple times I said to my previous batches also. So the, the people will come join and they go and they come back. Don't feel that I'm a radio jockey. So come and here, join here and then have uh, here for an hour, go back. And then this is not anything more. It definitely makes sense when you start implementing this. And definitely when you start implementing, then you will realize it. And keep warm up. And then the best part of this one is train your fellow buddies. Help your fellow buddies. So, so when you start giving the trainings and the information, then you will learn a lot of things. That is how I learned a lot. And in see, I told you that in a in an interview, within first four to five minutes, I'm able to get engage the candidate. Not even four to five minutes, within two minutes, with the basic questions, I'm able to engage the candidate. But I'll take the interview for one hour. I know that it's a waste of time for me, waste of the time for him. But absolutely, I will make sure that the time is not wasted for him. It may waste it for me, but I'll give you, I'll ask him the questions. I give him each and every answer for the explanation for him. What it makes is he will definitely remember that interview. See, it is not to remember this interview. It's made that too. He need to understand that concepts and prepare well before he going for an interview. People will come here hey, tomorrow interview. It's OK. I'll handle it. No, you can't handle it until unless you prepare. See, when you're going for the interviews, all you need to spend the time. So first time you will be spending one hour. Next, it will be reduced to 55. 50 minutes. You can reduce that one to 10 minutes. Because same topic every day, how many times you'll be seeing it? By that time, you'll be knowing very well. So just for with a glance, you can see, even though if you've written 30, 40 lines of code, within a single glance, we can identify that with means uh, what the implementation you have done. 30, 40 lines you can give with a single second, you can glance that. Because that is what your experience talks. No need to go line by line what he has been implemented. With the basic glance, we can see that, hey, what the implementations he has been done. And if some implementation is wrong, quickly we can identify. See, that is what you need to identify. How you'll be getting to this particular stages? So by practicing it, by training this, teaching this one to someone else. So then it would be easy for you to learn this one very quicker. Hey, you come, I'll explain. I'll take this topic. I'll explain this. You explain this. So that's how you need to exchange these particular topics and then try and that, prepare that well. OK, I prepare all these particular notes. Probably you will not understand this, but when you're going for the interviews at that time, this will give you a quick glance. When you see that particular thing, so complete in the picture, in the background, all these things will be getting remembered. So that's the power of our brain. If you, you have a small instinct, the small memory from your past, it will stop you and it will give you the complete video of that. Same way, when you are stuck to that particular program, what we discussed, when you come to that particular, for example, we discussed about the constructors. We just open that constructor file with the notes and everything. If you're reading and going through that, it gives you the complete reminder of the video. Hey, how on that day the classes went? So you can remember all those things See, because this is my personal experience. I was saying it when I, I don't usually hear my voice because I know that it is not really good. But uh, sometimes I used to feel that how the people would be feeling about it. So when I when a lot of videos has been uploaded, I never seen more. But when I went to one particular video, because recently for your references, I wanted to give you that uh, uh, I wanted to share the video. I just went to that particular videos and I start to see that. It gave me the complete glimpse of those particular students who were there on that day. What the questions they have been asked, what the people are and who are completely, I think 40 to 50 people were there. I remember each and every one, how those particular sessions went. Everything it, it able to recollect me within the span of five to 10 minutes. So that is the power of our brain. Why I'm giving you this example is maintain proper uh, structure of your programmings. Maintain the proper structure of uh, uh, writing the things and keep every notes. So your notes only will help you to learn a lot. Anyone else notes, you can't remember it. You prepare your own notes. 
you prepare your things so that you are based on your understanding you prepare that notes so that when you refer it back your understanding will come back to you detail means what is a constructors what is an interfaces difference is this so now this i am telling you right so these things practical you google it i am not saying that i am only the person no no absolutely crap i know that i am really stupid whatever i am giving it's not making any sense but somewhere you you means whatever the real time experience i am adding it there are many legends in the market they can train much more far far better than but only one thing what i am trying to say is may be useful in terms of the real time examples and the real time implementations which you got it so don't miss that particular pointers so note down those particular pointers here and keep that one so when you wanted to refer it back so definitely those things will be helping you a lot okay so by this we have been completed uh, the pointers of uh, encapsulation means i once again i'm saying that i i confront that i'm not implementing the uh, get means this encapsulation only for the benefit that we will not use it and then it will confuse so then that's the two reasons we are not eliminated completely the encapsulation but for abstraction i think we have been discussed whatever uh, the pointers the abstraction and the implementation and very detailedly we went for polymorphism and then inheritance implementations and there we discussed about the interfaces constructors static non static object references and everything so this is the end of the oops concepts so what we have been completed till now is